Hey everyone, today we're going to learn about FIT Simulation. Uh, FIT is a website that contains multiple interactive simulations for science and math subjects. As you can see, this is the FIT website. There are multiple simulations that you can run through or download through the website. If you look at these sections, it's um, arranged in specific to uh, subjects that you can choose. So let's say we choose biology. This will give us all the simulations that are related to biology topics. You can scroll down and find um, a simulation that fits the topic that we're teaching. If you can see, there is a, a tiny square next to each simulation. This indicates the type of program needed to run the simulation. In this case, um, we're going to look at the natural selection simulation and it requires Java. So I have Java already installed in my computer. We click on it and take us to this page which allows for um, specific information on how what software requirement it is, there's translations, there is specific advice for teachers and, and lessons and activities and generally where it fits in, in the curriculum. So if we um, download the um, simulation, we can click download and, and we get it down and then we can open it and it will run. What's nice about FIT is once you have run or downloaded this be uh, before, it saves the file. So as you can see here, I have a copy of it stored in my computer. So if I just click on that, the simulation will run automatically without the need of, you know, downloading it again from the website. As you can see, I can run it. So this is the natural selection selection um, simulation there is one rabbit there so we're gonna add another one and this this is to show how you know the population is impacted by the environment and the genes so in this simulation we can control the genes of the some of the genes of the rabbits um, we have a graph there, so this is good for mathematical um, use of data. We have environmental factors that we can change as well. As we can see, the, the amount of, of the population of rabbits is increasing. Maybe if we add a wolf, uh, if we add wolves, it will reduce the numbers. We can check what will happen if we add a particular uh, mutation. So let's see the brown fur mutation. As we can see, mutations take long, so therefore in this simulation they take long to appear. And they, they appear as a small number, and it, the number will increase as time passes by. You can move the time quickly by pressing this button. As we can see, bunnies have taken over the world. Um, this is just to say that, you know, if we don't have predators, the population will keep growing until, you know, um, takes over the world. Now, we can play a game and we can have a different outcome. So we have the rabbits again. Number of rabbits is increasing. Let's add the mutation again. Now, if we add the wolves, we can slowly see that the number of white rabbits have reduced. Now, if we keep going, you can see the effect of natural selection because we can now 
see a majority of brown rabbits comparing to white rabbits. Now what happens if I change the environment to Arctic? And let's run it. There's many brown. And we can see that it's shifting slowly back to white fur rabbits being the majority. So you can see the effect of natural selection visually and it's really strong for students to see this example and, and really be learning through this simulation. Now, in order for this simulation to be really effective in the classroom, we have to have specific questions and we're going to have a look at that. So, again, first simulations. Why would you use first simulations? So, it can, it can help us simulate real life events that can't be easily captured or recreated through time and space. As we have seen, we we were able to add a mutation and wait for a few seconds and for it to appear and for it to quickly um, spread through the population, which can we can't really do in a classroom situation. Um, and we could change the environment easily and see the impact. Where whereas in real life it's really hard to change an environment really quickly. It's a free resource, so you know any school can get that if they have a digital computer or a digital device that is co compatible with the simulations. It's very easy to install and operate, so you don't really have to be uh, very tech wise to use it. Uh, once it's installed in the computer, as said, can be used without accessing the computer. So this is a very efficient for teachers as it doesn't require internet and, and therefore the students are less likely to be distracted by you know the process of installing it or um, you know going through the internet. It can be used in multiple ways in the classroom. It can be the hook at the start or could be something to consolidate the learning at the end. It can be used as a homework activity and it fits in many stages of the lesson. So if we're going to take this lesson of natural selection to the next level using this uh, simulation, the interactive simulation from FIT, we can pose specific, specific questions that will scout for those students. So these kind of questions that I have here are very um, introductory or can be used at the start. So things like how many in individuals needed to start a population of rabbits? Why is that number necessary? What resources might help the growth of the population? Why is that the case? Can the mutation appear in the majority of the population at once? Why, why not? How might a population and fur color affect a whole population? What other mutation might affect the population and how? So we can do the thinking process of those. Um, so we can make predictions and hypotheses about what happens. Then test them out through the simulation. So this could be turned into an inquiry or a kind of a experiment. The next set of questions are further to develop the understanding. So oh, see if the students really understand the concept of natural selection. Uh, what are the effects of adding predators in the environment on individual rabbits and populace as a whole? Why is the predator able to have the effect? How would changes in the environment impact the population? Why would that be the case? How is the genetic material and the environment interacting when observing the simulation? What do you think has the greatest impact on the population and why? So here we can clearly see that those questions are trying to create this connection between the environment and genetics. That's why those questions are there. It's important. So again, we can hypothesize about what would happen and then see what happens, or we can just run the simulation and, and get some of these answers. 
Finally, this really connects the simulation to the natural selection concept by you know asking those questions: How is this simulation connected to natural selection concept? Give ex a specific example to link the two. What do you think about natural selection after you have run the simulation? Did the simulation add new ideas to the the natural selection concept or just reinforce old ones? What were the ideas? If you are able to edit the simulation to add extra fa factors or variables, what would you add? Why is this the case? What impact would that new variable have on the population and, and the simulation? Is it an environmental factor or a genetic one? So as you can see, those questions will come at the end to tie everything up and make purpose why we use that specific simulation for that specific topic. It's ne really necessary that students understand why we do specific activities uh, in the class for those specific topics. Thank you for listening. I hope you're going to use FET simulations in your classroom. And thank you for watching.